Welcome! This video contains an introduction, an interview so you can gain deeper understanding of the subject from spirit level, and a group frequency calibration so you can start to clear the frequency distortion patterns around this topic. Enjoy! Hi everyone, this is Karen Chong, and I'm here with my co-host Dennis Kelly. I often get the question, what should I eat to best support my spiritual journey? Or, what do you personally eat? I've been listening. So today, we're going to be talking about food and best practices to help nourish you, create stability and acceleration for your spiritual journey. After the discussion, we're going to wrap it up with the group frequency calibration to help begin to clear the distortion patterns around this topic. So let's get started. Dennis? You know, I'm really curious, Karen. Um, in the Western world, we talk a lot about food. Mm -hmm. You know, just so much. And but it's all about the impact on our physical body. Mm -hmm. um, but now, in your introduction, you talked about food in mm -hmm. the spiritual body, or food and its connection to our journey, our spiritual journey. Mm -hmm. Can you help me with that? Yeah. So. Um, I'm going to back up into a big sort of big picture answer. So people may or may not have heard me say before that we not only need to ascend in our spirit bodies, we also need to ascend physically. Okay. So what that means is that as we rise in frequency vibration, the point is also to physically rise in vibrational level, which means that your body needs to be clear enough in terms of his own vibrational level to sustain the higher and higher levels of frequency that your spirit body starts to experience as it rises in vibration. If not, what will happen is your, your spirit will pop out of your body. Does that make sense? So if your spirit is going too fast and the vibrational level of your spirit exceeds Okay, what I call, what they, you know, it's kind of like escape velocity, you know, it exceeds the, when they talk about escape velocity, let me back up. They talk about escape velocity. It's usually a term that physicists will use when they're talking about launching rockets into space. Okay? And when they talk about that, they say that in order for the rocket to launch into space, it has to have enough escape velocity, meaning it needs to be able to break the gravitational pull of the Earth. Yep. Okay? Something similar is happening with the body. Okay? So meaning, if, you're, if your spirit goes too fast, it goes so much faster in frequency vibration and your physical body can't sustain it, meaning it is not also matching to some degree or a greater degree that same resonance or that same frequency vibration, you'll break away from the, the pull of your body, your, your, the density of your body, and you will leave your body, which to us looks like death, okay? So you'll pop out of your body, okay? That's what happened to many, many of the in past time you know, the very enlightened masters, the, you know, the ancient Tibetans, you know, the different gurus, that type of thing, right? Where they'd rainbow body and they'd be like out, okay? So their consciousness would leave their bodies and their bodies would disintegrate or just, they would be dead, right? So that's what I mean by that. So in order for us to have um, enough clearance or clearing, okay, in our physical bodies, we need to be a mind, in order to sustain the higher levels of vibration of our spiritual journey, we need to be clear on the physical level as well, which means that it's helpful to support, nourish, and sustain, and also cleanse the physical body so it too can rise in frequency vibration because it's slower and denser than your spirit body in order to support that higher level acceleration of the spirit body. Does that make sense? They need to move together, yeah. or you're gonna pop out and then you're gonna have to do the whole thing again. Yeah. What I'm hearing you say is that you can do all this work and mm -hmm. release the distortions mm -hmm. and increase your frequency and increase your vibrational levels. Mm -hmm. But if you're not tending to the body, yeah. which is kind of your taxi cab, mm -hmm. that's going to get you there. Mm -hmm. And so if you really don't keep an eye mm -hmm. on your physical body, mm -hmm. you know, all this work that you're doing, maybe... You're just going to cap out. Yeah. It's, it's really, it's still good. So I just yep. want to clarify. Yep. Okay. So in your example, you can go to a certain level. Okay. So just to ex extrapolate a little yep. bit further. Okay. So let's imagine you're not paying attention to your physical body. And in yep. fact, I have clients who they 
have not, right? So they're physically ill or they're very uh, physically heavy. And what will happen is, and, and they're not tending to their health, okay? Like they're still not eating very well, they're not um, exercising, whatever, okay? They're not taking care of their physical bodies. What will happen is they get to a point on spirit level where if they do not like either tend to their physical body or stop the spirit progression, it's gonna cause them to exit their body, which will again look like death. Okay, does that make sense? Because the physical body can't sustain the level the spirit is accelerating towards. Okay, so that, yep. that sounds a little scary. So yep. maybe just to back up yep. here a little bit. Okay. So uh, if I haven't taken care of my body, mm -hmm. and, but I continue this work, mm -hmm. so when you say it's almost like a spirit could release from the body, mm -hmm. that looks like death. Yeah. So, so what are you saying? Well, I'm saying... Am I gonna die? No. Thank you for clarifying. So no, not necessarily. What will happen is either your spirit growth will cap at that rate, right? Because you're not wanting to leave your body. And what does that mean? It's Meaning you won't, you won't be able to progress I'll, beyond a certain point on your spiritual journey if you don't tend to the physical. Okay. Does that make sense? So, so you will only go to a certain level and you won't be able to go beyond that on so spirit level. So is it almost like a governor on an end? engine where it won't allow you to exceed a certain speed so yeah. that relationship between spirit and body yes i mean if you're just doing all this work all yeah. this work and the body's almost headed the other direction yeah it's like things are going to kind of shut down yes okay. exactly okay. so what's going to happen is you'll start to not feel well or whatever i mean it's not like you instantly die yeah. okay i just want to make yeah. that really clear yeah. it's just that you start to not feel great physically yeah. right and also you start to notice that your spiritual progression slows down because you're not tending to your physical body. Both start to happen. Does that make sense? So I admit, it sounds very extreme what yeah, I just said, yeah, right? It, so so just to, it's not like you instant on, right? Or instant yeah. out is what I meant to say. Like it's not like you'd instantly die. It's more like if you continue, right? And if yeah. you continue in a way where you're not being mindful, something's gonna happen. You're physically gonna start to de deteriorate and or your, okay. your spiritual acceleration will slow down. Okay. so. You just help release a lot of anxiety. Oh, good. Good. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to cause that. <laughs> so, so now I want to back up, mm -hmm. and I want to hear about the benefits of truly taking care of the body. Yeah. And you say food, but I assume food and exercise and sleep and just yeah. taking care of the physical body so that I can do this in harmony with my spiritual yes. growth. Yes, so that's the whole point, okay. right, of this. So the question of the original question, which um, I mentioned in the introduction is, how can I eat to support my spiritual growth the most? Or what do you personally eat, okay? Those two questions, and to some degree the question you asked as well, it's how do you do this so that you can, ha to me, how I interpret that question, okay, it's just my perspective, is okay, if I want to accelerate as fast as possible on spirit level, how do I have my physical body keep up so I can still continue to accelerate on spirit level? That's how I would interpret that question. Okay, so that's how I'm going to answer, answer it, okay? So, all right. So the first thing is that a lot of people, um, so first, what I would say is it's really important. I'm going to talk about some basic stuff, and then I'll talk about certain, like, cleansing, intermittent fasting stuff that people may, may want to play with or not, depending where they are. Okay, okay? so I'm going to talk about general and then more black belt if you choose okay. to go that route, okay? So the first thing is it's really important to um, be very mindful to not eat genetically modified foods, okay? So to not eat things which have been bred specifically to um, sustain certain, you know, against certain pests and whatnot, okay? I think we all know what non-GMO is, right? And um, it's interesting because there's all this research coming out now about, you know, soy being oil and how it has such a high prevalence in our American diets and how, you know, basically if you eat in the cafeteria, if you eat fried food, if you eat prepared food, there's tons of soybean oil in it. And the problem with soybean oil is it has a lot of, and I'm going to probably say this incorrectly, I think it's called, I'm very bad with scientific names, I'm sorry, glycosophol or something like this. So basically it's the thing that they put in Roundup. It's very toxic. It actually is a poison. So it will cause cancer and then you will um, probably perish from it if you eat enough of it, right? So it's not good for us, it's toxic. So the thing is to be very careful to not eat too much GMO stuff because it has these different 
things in it that we're not we're only becoming aware of now that are very toxic for the body. If you stay clear of not if you stay clear of GMO stuff, it's easier to not have that extra level of toxicity happening to the body. Okay, so let you know. I also recommend, if you can, to eat as organic as possible because, of course, so if you put poison in your plants, right, and then you eat the plant, it's kind of like eating poison. It's kind of like you put, imagine like you put ketchup on something, right, and then you, and then you eat it, like you're eating the ketchup and the thing, right? So it's kind of the same thing. You're just, you're eating the poison. It's just, it just it's a little time delayed, but there you go, right? So if, you're, if you eat organic, then you're also oftentimes, if I understand correctly, when it says organic, it also implies non-GMO, and I would check that, but I believe that to be true. So, um, so, so that's good. Um, the other thing is that if you're going to eat meat, so here I'm going to talk about meat. Okay, so I know a lot of people are vegan, and that's wonderful. What I will say about veganism is that for prolonged periods of time, for many bodies, not all of them, it's really difficult to sustain because the most bodies need a little bit of um, meat because what I've noticed with people and this is just on spirit level is that what happens is it starts to cause a what looks like to me like an eating of the own body it's like the body starts to consume itself in this really weird way it gets like slimy and it starts to consume itself and I totally understand like vegan I was vegan for a while myself so okay so I understand veganism and what I will say is do it for a while and see how good you're feeling on it. If you're starting to have digestive issues, if you're starting to feel tired, if you're starting to, it may be that you need to eat a small quantity or, of, um, or consume a small quantity of something like bone broth, okay? Which is from the bones of animals that they would normally discard anyway. So you're using, you're actually using honoring the animal, right? So you can, um, and they boil it for a really long time so the minerals and the collagen, all that stuff comes out of the bone and then you can consume it. You only have to take like a half a cup a day, okay, for it to stop this process where it looks like this, it's almost like the body starts to decay and like consume itself. I'm not saying every vegan has to do this. I'm just saying I have noticed in my clients that are vegan that sometimes they get to this point after having practiced for a certain number of years where they have this start to happen and if they just take a little bit of something like bone broth, it starts to shift and they start to feel better. Okay, yeah. I'm not saying go out and eat like a 15 ounce steak every night. Right. So, so just to back up a little bit, so you, you mentioned that a little bit of meat mm -hmm. in a diet may be very beneficial. Mm -hmm. so for when most you, bodies, yes. For most bodies. So when you say meat, you know, there's pork, there's beef, yeah. there's turkey, there's yeah. chicken, yeah. there's, so there's goat, there's, yeah. you know. All kinds of things. Yeah. So is that your classification of meat? Yeah. So what I would just say is an animal protein, and, um, and I include fish in that. Uh, well, there's meat and fish, obviously. So for both, whether it's meat or fish, make sure that it's, okay, so if it's meat sustainably raised, if it's cow or... I think that's a, right, if that's sustainably a real raised, important point. Which is really important. Beef is not beef. beef is, yeah, exactly. Cows aren't really supposed to eat corn. They're not really, like, they're, they're, they're things that are, they're ruminants. They are supposed to eat grass. That's what their bodies were designed for. If you feed cows corn, and there's lots of research on this, right? It starts to create holes in their stomach, it breaks down their digestive tracts, it's really not good. And they creates a lot of acidity in their bodies and then of course you eat their flesh, which is not good for us. So if we eat corn-fed meat from spirit perspective, it's not great because it's almost like um, the on a frequency level that that meat is of like, a, uh, it has more of a resonance of like decay in it. So when you consume it, it has this resonance of higher level of decay than say like a grass-fed cow, which is supposed to be eating grass. It's, it's you know, like cows eat grass, it's the ruminants. And it, because it's not out of integrity with the way it's supposed to eat, it doesn't have that same resonance. Our bodies can take in that flesh and change it into whatever we need to in order for nourishment. Does that make sense? So I'm only talking about spirit perspective. There's yeah. lots of research on grass-fed versus corn-fed, and you can all do your own research, so please do, but there is a difference. Also, um, you know, if you're going to, some people hunt and, it, you know, they eat game, which is great, actually, because you're eating game meat, which is wonderful. Um, the same with poultry, right? You just be aware whether or not the, the chickens that you're eating is sustainably raised or not. Are they caged in these horrible little things and not allowed to move and all that sort of stuff, right? Also, because of course, their conditions impact 
the resonance that they're at and you're eating their flesh. So it, it does make a difference to us, uh, whether or not you're aware of it on spirit body, how we take it in, how much nutritional value it has, how our bodies can integrate it, absolutely has to do with the conditions that the, the animal um, experienced or what they were fed. Obviously, it's just like, if you're going to eat plants and they pour poison all over it and you eat that, then obviously it's not going to be great for you. So also with regards to meat, so whether you're eating goat or whatever, um, beef or whatever, then I would also suggest that you don't eat very much of it, right? So to be, you know, there's this, cons this idea of like lots of meat all the time. Really the optimal thing for most people, I'm not saying everybody, okay, because this is like a video that addresses it or an episode that addresses everyone. For most bodies, it's helpful to eat mostly plant-based, mostly plant-based, yep. okay? I'm just gonna reiterate that, okay? And then a little bit of meat, like the size of your fist a day, okay? Small, not a lot, yep. high quality, whether it's fish or meat. If you're gonna have fish, be sure that it's like wild caught, line caught, all that sort of stuff. Because here's the thing, we are, our choices of what we eat affects the collective in terms of the oneness. We are part of this planet. The planet is part of us. How we choose to eat impacts the whole. We're not aware of it so much at the beginning, but as our consciousness rises, we become much more aware of that. So it impacts you what your food choices are, right? Just because it, you're impacting the oneness with your food choices. So if you're going to eat fish, just be aware of the fish that you're eating. Like you said, it's like beef. It's not like every fish is equal, right? So how, was it farm-raised? Is it really dirty? Like all this sort of yeah. stuff. Yes, there's all this research on farm-raised stuff and I'm not, whatever, just go research it on your own. But just see how, what the practices are that are best and that you're most congruent with when you're eating meat and to have a little bit of it. You don't need to eat a lot of it. So that's what I would say about, about meat, okay? And also just to be aware, mostly plants, mostly plants. Okay, and if you're vegan, wonderful, and just be aware of how you're feeling in your body, and if you need to supplement with something, that's all. Here, here's a little wishful thinking. Okay. I, I see in the future where the packaging of meats or whatever it is, mm -hmm. is there's a component that is its frequency vibration. Yeah. So if it's beef, you know, there's all kinds of ranges of beef like yeah. you talked about yeah but how high does that beef vibrate oh that's interesting because truly what we want is to yeah. take in high vibrations yeah. to match our vibrations yeah so i don't want to yeah dumb myself down with yeah. food that just is a slug yeah and so I, I think in the That's future, <laughs> you'll, there'll be a measurement for the vibrational frequency. That'd be cool. Yeah. So. <laughs> awesome. That's, I like that idea. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so um, the other thing that I would also mention with regards to food is how often are you eating and how are you eating? And are you conscious when you're eating? Meaning, are you mindful? So how you eat is as important as what you are eating. Meaning, are you really present? A lot of us have a lot of distortion around food, how much we're about allowed to consume, how high the quality of the food is that we're, we can consume, all that stuff, because it's tied in a lot culturally through abundance. Okay, so a lot of those things are reflections of each other. Food and abundance and love in most cultures are bound together. And so therefore there's a tremendous amount of distortion around food. So it's really important to, to notice how are you with food? Like some people actually sit guarded around their food. Like they put their arms around their plate because they've been raised in a big family and they're protecting the food that they're eating from like the other people at the table. Right? Um, am I? <laughs> Is this a familiar don't, story? <laughs> don't, don't mess with my food. <laughs> exactly. You're not the only one. There's some people, right? <laughs> so how are you when you're eating? Are you in a state of defense yeah. when you're eating? Like, I got to eat it really, <laughs> really fast. <laughs> because if you don't eat it really fast, then someone else can get it. Right? So how can you allow yourself to be present with the food and slow down? Right? My point is simply, how are we when we are eating? And also, how present we are with how we are eating. Okay, this sounds like some, like, whatever, new agey stuff. But truly, the more mindful you are and more present you are when you eat, you will register satiation faster and fullness faster, and you will need to eat less, assuming that you're eating high-quality food. Right? So I just wanted to mention presence when we're eating, because it's not just about what we're eating. It's about how we are when we're eating and the environment that we're eating in. So. And, and would you say that it even goes a step further? Who prepared that food? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Who prepared that food is huge. And the state, it's funny, you know, um, 
there, there, there is a cultural distortion pattern where a lot of women my age, right, their moms felt they had to prepare the meals, okay, because it was part of their role as women at that time. I'm talking about in the 70s now, yeah. okay? And so some of them loved to cook, and that was wonderful. It was providing nourishment and loveliness for their families. And some women did it because they had to. It was required be, within their cultural paradigm. Does that make sense? And so they did it under duress. There's absolutely a difference in the quality of the food of somebody who prepared it because they had to and they're angry about it versus somebody who's doing it because they want to nourish and it gives them joy to do it. Different vibrational level altogether impacts the food absolutely. So when you receive food, and people talk about this all the time, and you go to a restaurant where the food was prepared with love, you can sense it. it's like instant. You're like, wow, whoever made this food loves food and it loves nourishing people. You can feel it when you eat it. Right? And if you go to someone's home and they really love it and it's prepared with love, you can feel it. Right? It's, not a, it's not like this new agey like, thing. It's actually for real. Like it's, it, it impacts your ability to take in the nourishment of that food because it's of a higher vibrational order. So that's really awesome. And we can impact our food. And sometimes some people, depending on who they are, when you eat something, especially if you're eating meat, okay, or even plants, to give gratitude for it. Some people bless their food. Some people, it's just gratitude. It's like, thank you. It's like, you used to be a cow a long time ago, or maybe, I don't know, a few days, whatever. Thank you, because you made the ultimate sacrifice so that I can eat. Now, nature's like this, right? Lions eat things and whatever eat things. Like, we all, like, the, the natural food cycle is to eat other things. That's just the way the natural, natural world is. It is also helpful, like I said, to give gratitude for the thing it was, right? Because we're humans and we have a consciousness so it's like thank you for making the sacrifice for me and even in that act of gratitude it raises the vibrational level of what you're about to receive into your body because you've given gratitude for that thing so as i said it's not just about what you're eating it's how you're eating that's important and i mentioned before about not eating too much yeah. yes Okay, in our culture, we tend to eat a lot, right? It's about quantity. We're always like, like you know, like, I don't know why, but we're eating a lot. And it's almost like um, some people eat and they, uh, they use it as a form of distraction or they stress eat or whatnot. One of the things, and there's also on the flip side of that, there's also this distortion in our culture around negation, like using food as punishment, right? Like I'm not supposed to eat. Like, you know, a lot of women will punish themselves with food, meaning not eating it. Right? because they're not supposed to, because they don't want to be fat, and if they, they, they do eat, then they failed, and they should feel guilty because they're not on the diet, and then they're going to get really heavy. Do you see what I'm saying? There's a lot of distortion around eating and not eating. Okay. So first, what I'll say is it's helpful to have frequency work to remove all this stuff. There's so much distortion around food, how we're eating, when we're eating, how much we're eating. It's, it's a little bit, it's, it's, it's kind of mind-boggling, actually. When, if people could see what I see when I meet people, I'm like, wow, there is a lot of distortion there around food. And it's not just within us, it's within our lineage too, right? Okay, so it is really helpful for many people to eat a little bit less, okay? So there's a whole bunch of different studies on intermittent fasting or autophagy, okay? It is a process where our bodies go into a natural cycle of self-cleaning, where the mitochondria get all active and start, because they're not because you haven't, you've stopped eating for a little bit, it, they kind of go into high gear and start to eat the bacteria and all the waste products around it, right? Which is really helpful, cleanses the body, can create a lot of stability within the body because you're constantly cleansing. There is forms of intermittent fasting, fasting which are very severe. Okay, it's just like, all right, so you're only going to eat between 12 and 8, and then 4 and 8, and then 2 and 8, or in, in p.m. in the evening, in the afternoon, right? And you're only going to restrict the time, you're going to restrict the time in which you are consuming food so that your body goes into autophagy or, or, or its own uh, self cycle of cleaning because you're fasting, yep. right? You're increasing the length of time in which you're not eating, which theoretically will allow your mitochondria to kick in and then to start the self cleaning process. What I'm going to just say briefly, and I'm not an expert on this, but I've noticed that for many, this works really, really well for men. Okay, I don't know why it works. It can work really well for men. For women, this can be kind of really not good. Okay, or not even not good, but it's just it can be really harmful to them because hormonally, women are different. We're different. Like 
the male body and the female body are just very different from each other. So what can happen is our hormones can go out of whack because we're just in this period of like not enoughness and then we, our bodies from frequency standpoint look to me like we go into fear, like the body goes into fear and then holds. It like holds onto fat and it holds onto like stuff like in the body, inflammation, all that stuff because it's in fear, right? There's not enough, there's not enough. That's the female body will do this. Let's say all female bodies, many. Okay, so intermittent fasting for women is a little different than for men. I'm not saying that you can't do that and there's some women who won't benefit from it, but I've noticed that there are ways to do it that are more integrated with the feminine cycle. So there's actually a book, and I'm not, an, I'm not endorsed by this woman. She doesn't even know I exist. Her name's Naomi Whittle, and her book is called Glow 15. I've just heard about it recently myself, and it's really lovely because it's very nourishing and supportive of intermittent fasting and autophagy, but with, and within a, um, it's, so, it's more helpful for, for women. So we don't have, like some women, when they do intermittent fasting, not in this process, they have very strong hormonal, negative response like hot flashes in addition to all that other stuff i mentioned right night sweats they get really like it's not good okay in this process this woman talks about what happens is you're in a very nourishing sort of constant state of autophagy meaning like for her system and this is just my interpretation of her system so you go read the book if it resonates with you where three days a week you only eat for a limited period of time so between say noon and eight on those days you consume lowers amount of protein because that will start kick your body into a natural cycle of autophagy. You also then will um, eat your fats at the beginning of the day and your carbohydrates at the end. So when you eat fat first, what happens for women is our bodies relax. It's like, like I'm talking about eating a good fat, like avocado or coconut oil. So our, our hormones can then regulate into their own cycles and our bodies are like, oh, there's enough, there's enough. So now I can release things that I don't want anymore because I'm not in a state of fear that I don't have enough. Does that make sense? I'm talking about it from spirit level now. Okay, on the other four days, you can eat sooner and you eat more protein. So your body's constantly cleansing, right? Because what's happening is you have days when you're not eating and you're lower in protein and days where you are not, not eating. You're eating for a restricted period of time and lower protein and on the other days you're eating high protein. So do you see what I'm saying? Your body goes into this natural cycle of cleansing on all those days you eat your fat first and your carbohydrates, good quality carbohydrates, mostly plants, fruits, that type of thing, at the end of the day. So your body is actually in a period of ketosis, which is about the keto diet. I'm sure if you want to read about the keto diet, you can. It's in a state of ketosis for longer, which supports autophagy. Her book is great because it talks about food, it talks about exercise, sleep, and all that sort of stuff. I find it great for me. It feels, it feels better than just hardcore intermittent fasting. So it's if, that if you, you are a female and you have been having issues with intermittent fasting and wanting a different way, this might be something for you. I'm just, I'm just gonna repeat that, sure. Karen, because I think you just create quite a bit of interest in okay. the book. So GLOW is G-L-O-W. 15. 15, one, one five. five. Yeah, by okay. Naomi Whitwell. And again, I don't receive anything from yeah, her yeah. for this. Yeah, yeah, there's no connection there's no between, connection between, between you and me the book. And yeah. it's, just, it's just, you find it very fascinating. Yeah. And um, so that's yeah. something that people have the opportunity to take a look at yeah. if they and wish. What, and what happens is that when I tap into the frequency of the information in that book, and also for women, and also for men, it's not just for women, it actually causes a very stable cycle in the body because you're constantly in this cleanse, yeah. very soft cleanse cycle and you're feeling nourished and stable, which is good for your body to be able to support the higher levels of frequency work that you're doing on the spirit level. Yeah. Well, uh, I think the reason you created quite a bit of interest is I think there's just a lot of women that have been very, very frustrated about the yeah. whole dieting process. Oh God, yeah. And what do I eat? When do I eat? Mm -hmm. You know, how do I eat? Yeah. You know, so. And that process, by the way, isn't just for females, right? It's yeah. also for men. Yeah. I'm not, it's just that yeah. for women's bodies, it, it's even more extreme, right? When you just do intermittent fasting. So, um, yeah, so that Glow 15 thing can work really well for men too. Yeah. So I'll go back to my wrap. Okay, go with your wrap. <laughs> I took us out of detour, sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. So, uh, you know, what I was thinking about is as you, you kind of went through the beef and the fish and the, you know, whatever, the vegetables, and is basically the question is, as, as I look at this meal, mm -hmm. is this going to raise my vibrational mm -hmm. frequency 
or lower it. Yes. And the other thing too, I just like to mention sugar. It's just that sugar is a really big problem in our culture. We're very addicted to it. It's in almost every processed food. It hides in everything. So, you know, please become aware of different things that contain sugar that don't use the word sugar, right? Yeah. Like maltodextrin and maltose and fructose and all these things. They don't say sugar. They say all these different things. And we don't know that it's sugar that we're consuming. It's often high, like corn syrup sugar, which is really not good for our bodies on frequency level because it causes all this instability. Okay, it's very destabilizing on frequency level yeah. to have that much sugar, and it's not nutritional for us, um, yeah. for most bodies, I'm saying all, but we're often like consuming too much of it. And so as a result, it actually will ping you in and out of time. It'll speed you up and drop you back. And when, you're, when that means to you, all you care about is that when you're in and out of time like that, it causes an extreme amount of distortion and it actually impacts your ability to affect and create your reality. That's not good. And I'm a living testimonial to the fact that its addictive quality is extremely high. Yeah. And so, yeah. Wow. Well, well, yeah. Sure. And I think from a marketing perspective, the industry has gotten very good at kind of deceiving us mm -hmm. about the sugar level mm -hmm. in the different foods. Yeah. You know. Or we don't really, or we're not very educated in how to read them yeah. or in terms of how it's labeled. So yes, we need to be mindful. Yeah. So. Well, Karen, I think we got it. Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you. Karen, could you help me? I hear so often when I look at uh, your video or your website, GFC. Exactly. What is that? A GFC is a group frequency calibration, which looks a lot like a guided meditation on a particular topic. And what I'm doing is I'm helping you to remove the distortion patterns of that particular topic. And because you're coming together as a mastermind in a group to connect to pure source even more and to clear the distortion patterns of this particular topic, what happens is a tremendous amount of momentum starts to happen because of the energetic of the entire group. And each individual is able to move faster and ascend higher than they could have on their own. Welcome everyone to the group frequency calibration of food and what matters. Scanning the mastermind. Okay, for direction. It's tapping into what you guys need. So, all right, what we're going to do first is become aware of your body. And as you become aware of your body, you are going to please be aware of it. Whole and complete. So basically from the skin in. Be aware of your entire body. And as you become aware of your entire body, please now become aware of how your weight is sinking into whatever you are sitting, standing, or lying down on. Noticing that. Yep, and becoming aware now of your breath. What is the quality of your breath at this moment? Without changing it, just notice it first. And as you notice your breath, notice if you can allow for it to deepen to soften into your chest and into your belly. Slowing the breath down. And now becoming aware of your surroundings. So feeling or becoming aware of the texture of whatever it is that you're sitting, standing, or lying down on. The texture of the fabric of your clothing.
and now becoming aware of the sounds around you in addition to the sound of my bo voice both on your end and on mine Good. And now becoming aware, please, of your solar plexus between your belly button and the base of your sternum. And as you become aware of this space, taking a nice deep breath here, inhaling, holding your breath in for a count of four. And whenever you're complete with that breath, holding your breath out for a count of six. Yep. And for those of you who have a very fast count and have who, who have completed that breath, bringing your attention to your upper ribs between your heart space and your collarbones, breathing normally. And as we wait for the mastermind to coalesce and become coherent, for those of you who are new, please note that I'm working on you at the group and the subgroup level, and that I'll be making noises on my end. So you'll hear me yawn, even though I'm not tired, exhale sharply, or hum. And that's just how I remove the distortion patterns. And I'm working more and more in silence. So if you hear me making no noise, please know that I am still working on you. Now that the mastermind has coalesced, keeping our attention in the upper rib area, we're going to go ahead and ask ourselves the following question. How can I become even more aware of my connection only to pure source? And for those of you who are new, that question again is how can I become even more aware of my connection only to pure source. And as you ask yourself that question, please imagine, sense, feel, or become aware of the very center of your body. And for those of you who already know this, this is not a random visualization. Becoming aware of a brilliance at the very center of this space. And a brilliance doesn't necessarily need to mean a visual light. It could mean a feeling be tingly, warm, shimmery, whatever appears for you is perfect. Allowing for this brilliance to intensify because you have your attention on it. And as this brilliance intensifies, it expands outwards through all of your cells, through your organs, out through your bone structure, 
through your flesh and out through the pores of your skin into the space between your physical body and the outer perimeter of your spirit body, which is a sphere at arm's length all around you. Good. And for those of you who are experienced, you can do that at whatever pace you want, focusing on the brilliance at the end within the sphere. Okay, so even if you get here rather quickly, that's wonderful. Intensifying the brilliance within the sphere. Very good. And now becoming aware of the space around the sphere. And as you become aware of this space, I'm pulling your frequency vibration much higher, irrespective of what level you're at. And the reason we're doing this is twofold. One is so this session can be the most effective possible because it's coming from the highest resonating order. And the second is because you can't yet come to this vibrational level on your own. It helps you entrain to your future self. Good. Very nice. Bringing your attention, please, to your throat and to those upper ribs. Okay. So this first distortion pattern that we're going to remove is overwhelm. Not knowing what is quote unquote healthy for you to eat. Okay, what is appropriate for your body. So removing this confusion or a lack of clarity or overwhelm. Or and for some of you, all three. Good. Becoming aware, please, of your lower ribs. And as you become aware of your lower ribs, we're removing the distortion pattern of this sort of like lack of awareness or sensitivity to the impact of different things you eat on your body. Okay, so a lack of vigilance around this. 
So really just awareness. So let's remove this. Right? And as I remove this, you may find in your physical reality that you want to do a cleanse and take out certain foods just to see how your body feels. And then you slowly add foods back in to see how your body reacts. Many of you on this call do not process sugar, white flour, or actually flour at all, or dairy, cow dairy, very well. Okay, it causes a great deal of inflammation and almost like a mucousy kind of effect in the gut leading to all kinds of digestive issues, including not feeling like you can lose weight, okay, or like swelling in the belly, or just a lot of inflammation, okay? So releasing all of this. And for a very large subgroup of you, you're sensitive to pesticide, the toxicity from pesticides, okay? So you've inflammation in your system because you're having a, an allergic reaction basically constantly to the food that you're eating. So for you, uh, if you've noticed that you have a hard time losing weight or and you're, whatever it is, you're inflamed or your digestion is off, Organic is actually very important for you. Okay. Some people tolerate non-organic better than others. If you can eat organic, much better. Okay. I might have said that in reverse. If you can eat organic, much better. That's what I meant. Yep. Bringing your attention to the upper part of your digestive tract. So, if you uh, find your solar plexus between your belly button and the base of your sternum, go into your body, okay? the upper part of your digestive tract. Wow. Okay. So a number of you have uh, bacterial growth, over bacterial growth here. Um, our yeast infections, candida, that type of thing. Not yeast infections, excuse me. Just hyper yeast growth or candida helping this subgroup here for the rest of you helping your digestive tract clear out and become more efficient For the vast majority of you on this call, GMO food does not digest well for you. Okay, so GMO, whatever, corn, soy, whatever it is, is not digestible by you. Gets caught in your di in in your digestive tract can cause diverticulitis, that type of thing. Okay, inflammation inside your gut, leaky gut syndrome, all that sort of thing. I'm not a scientist. I'm just telling you what I perceive on spirit level. 
nor am I a doctor. <sighs> However, for many of you, on a spirit level, your bodies do not tolerate this very well. Some of you have very old food waste still in your digestive tract. So we're going to facilitate this coming out. Now in the solar plexus, not in the digestive tract, but more on the surface. All right. So this is the distinction, okay, to help you distinguish between what you think you want and what your body actually needs. Okay, so distinguishing cravings from the mind versus what the body needs to nourish itself. Okay, this is very dis confused for most people or intertwined in a way that's not helpful. So we're gonna distinguish these two things. So you start to notice before you put the whatever in your mouth, mm, maybe this isn't the best for me. Good. And now from the pubic bone all the way up to your heart space. All right. This is removing this distortion pattern of low self worth or non deserving of being really vital, healthy, and clear in terms of your relationship with food and how your body processes it. So releasing this low self worth, non deserving. Bring your attention to your xiphoid process right at the base of your sternum, all the way down, almost to your belly button, so three inches or seven centimeters directly beneath your xiphoid process. I'm going to reset, clear out, integrate your pain body. Good. This brings us to the end of this session. I look forward to working with you on the next GFC. These GFCs help people release distortion patterns. It's my sincere hope that you benefit profoundly from this series, 
which is why I spend so much of my personal resources creating these as my gift to the world. If a GFC topic resonates with you, often more work that can be provided in this one GFC is needed to really clear or loosen deeply held distortion patterns in areas that are sticky. Because these patterns are like layers of an onion, usually there are multiple layers to individual topics. Depending on how much of a challenge this topic is for you, it may make sense for you to go deeper than what this session allows. If you feel this is the case for you, please visit sphericalluminosity.com for more targeted support.